Was that Parco deep in the chamber? Here's Kelly. Slater grabs the wall, tucks in, gets some time. Yeah. Before emerging, goes to one of his beautiful roundhouse cutbacks. Banks off the phone. Old swivel hips. <laughs> still got it. Bringing it through to the inside, starting to build now. Uh, I've got some breaking news, Kaipo. Uh, Stephanie Gilmore, ladies first. You've got priority. Oh, sweet. <laughs> Thanks. I'll take it. Yeah, yeah, yep. Thanks. Kelly? All good with that? Yeah, sit just wide apart and drop in on him. He'll go like this. He'll do this thing. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He'll do his thing. Yeah, of course. Ock, you've been down here every afternoon checking the tide. You ready to roll? I've got no problems with that. Queen of snapper. Priority. Um, yeah, no tide. Hopefully he's coming in soon, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> Lots of kids watching, Joel. We won't get you to reenact that one, but maybe in the water if it goes down. Thanks, Uncle Kipes. <laughs> <laughs> that is good stuff. That's a great mix right there. 24 world titles paddling out right now, and we're in for a treat. Well, this is something special, and um, there is a heck of a lot of world titles and competition wins between this mob. Yeah. I think the boys are just discussing whether they're going to jump off the rock or whether they're uh, going to paddle from froggies, uh, or are they just going to go out through the keyhole? <laughs> yeah, I, I, like, I like the story of um, Slater and Mick. He uh, referenced that on their matchup, their head-to-head -head history, actually. Nine wins for Kelly Slater, ten wins for Mick Fanning. When you're in for a special kind of treat. What a joy this is going to be, seeing these world champions, these icons of the sport, immortals, if you will, out there doing their thing in pumping conditions here at Snapper Rocks. Ronnie Blakey joined with Richie Lovett and Wayne Rabbit Bartholomew, the 78 world champion. Bugs, this is something special. What a treat. This really is a treat. And, you know, before uh, I was going, what is, is Fisher playing tonight? <laughs> there, were, there was thousands of people just rocking up. Here's Mick Fanning. The three-time world champion just coming back from a medial knee injury. But how could he resist the opportunity to serve her alongside his heroes out here in this oh. lineup? Certainly testing out that knee. <laughs> wow, Jeez. careful, buddy. <laughs> Checking his board. He'll call for the ski. Oh, this is so much fun. 24 world titles out there in the lineup right now. Together, 136 championship tour wins, <laughs> and many of them here at Snapper Rocks. It is just an uh, unbelievable record uh, between this lot and. Uh, well, Mick looked pretty fired up on that first wave. Wow, these guys Silky can't help smooth. themselves. <laughs> they well, Kelly, help it. Kelly couldn't help himself. Before the, the hooter went, he just took off on a wave, went all the way down the point. Hey, I, th I thought Stace spoke to the boys before the heat. He said Steph had ultimate priority as the queen of Snapper Rocks. Uh, well, look at the replay here. What do you reckon, Bugs? Oh, yeah, look look, look how, how easy Mick Fenny keeps speed up. There's a full roundhouse cut. He comes around here and then... I love this little part here. Look, boom, bing, bing. Hardly anything. Massive speed. And then, wow. Oh. Yeah, the big roundhouse hook here. Well, it is just vintage Mick Fanning roundhouse cut back there. So compressed on that final stages. And, uh, well, it all went wrong here. Just straight out of the flats and uh, just into the trough. Just... Uh, be careful with the knees, please, Mick. <laughs> for sure. Mick jumping back out into the lineup. But this is a, a special treat for everyone and something that WSL wanted to get on, along with the announcement of this event, this Challenger Series event, being upgraded again to championship tour status. We've got these world champs who really did dominate through the, the Snapper Rocks Championship Tour era. Well, that's right. The Snapper Rocks uh, era began, it really began in 2000 uh, with Taj Burrow, but that was the QS 10,000, and then it went into the CT, and this is the crew, and plus Taj, who dominated Snapper in that era. Um, the, the, the classic is, this is a taste of CT right now. 
you call it the Kelly Slater factor, it could be the Steph Gilmore factor, the Mick Fanning factor, the Parko, the Oki factor. Combined, thousands of people have turned up. Yeah, it was uh, amazing seeing the, the wave of people just come down the hill from uh, parking their vehicles. They've travelled from far and, and wide to come down here and witness this because it's a special treat. Not only are we celebrating this event being upgraded to championship to a status once again from 2025 through to 2028, we know we're going to have it on the schedule. We're also celebrating the end of an era. Kelly Slater, no longer a full-time campaigner on the championship tour, uh, created history every time he put the jersey on through basically the last 10 years he's been on tour bugs. Well, that's right, because, I mean, I think you'd think maybe Oki, Sonny Garcia, late 30s, early 40s, but, say, from 42 to 52, I think it's Kelly Slater. Every time he's put the jersey on, he's, you know, up the age and up that record of being the eldest surfer competing at the championship to a level. Certainly going to be the eldest surfer ever to compete in a Challenger Series event this week, and he will obviously add to that record as he takes up wild op uh, wildcard opportunities a couple of times through the back half of this year. Here's Steph Gilmore. Great to see her out here doing her thing, Rich. Yeah, just uh, the grace and style of Steph Gilmore. It just It matches, it marries so well with these walls here at Snapper Rocks. You know, obviously this is where she really groomed that style, honed it, perfected it, and uh, she's just, uh, well, she's used it at all different places around the world. But you know that this is a very special break for her. Skip school. She skipped school to get her first championship to a win as a <laughs> wild right. card. Way back in 2005. And then joined the uh, elite ranks. And it didn't take her long to start racking up world titles. And she is the queen. The she goat. Is. Well, and, and of all the five surfers, she, she's still live. Like she, uh, this is Stephanie Gilmore will more than likely be in the CT in 2025 at Snapper Rocks. Well, she's already taken up that wild card opportunity, but look at the, the career stats there. 33 incredible event wins all over the world, but six of them here at home. Here goes Kelly Slater. He's also got six victories here, and where well, you got to wind the clock right back to think about his first. Yeah, well, Kelly's just got an amazing strike right here. I, I believe if he makes the final, he wins. Are, yeah. we, are we calling this a final? Yeah, <laughs> he, he, that's right, Rich. Six from six. Six from six, right? Yeah. So uh, he's got a perfect finals record out here, Mick. Wow. Still looking so sharp, isn't he? Oh, just getting the tar release, just looking so smooth. And this is a man who's just coming back from injury too, so we know he's not firing on all cylinders, but geez, he looks like he is just in fine form. He's been a busy man too, welcoming uh, his second child to the family. Big congratulations to his partner, Bree, who no doubt been watching on with their daughter. As we see Joel Parkinson, classic stuff behind the rock, but Oki, he's having none of it. In the 98 World Champ. All time. Just throws himself into it. 99 World Champ. Just uh, has been looking so sharp out here. Oki's forever young, built like a grommet still. So strong, and that back end never gets old. Sure does, and that was awesome. What a great ride. And, he, you know, he picked it. That's a snapper special because Parco was super deep. He, he didn't give him the benefit of the doubt. For a second there, I thought it might have been Kelly on a revisited Kira final. But isn't that the rule between the locals, Bugs? If they don't say your actual name, you can scream and holler all you, all you like. But if they don't call your name, they're going. Oh, I've stood behind Bugs on a couple of waves out here, screaming the house down. <laughs> Rabbit, Wayne, Bugs! <laughs> I've got a lot of nicknames. Champ! You've you got to get the right one. And, of course, Michael Peterson had the classic whistle, you know? If you oh, deep yeah. in the barrel and you hear the whistle. Oh, he, he's whistling from the shoulder. <laughs> I'm going. But that is all-time Parker. I knew he was around the corner waiting for a barrel. He loves a barrel. And he, what a beautiful slaughter to perfection. And there is a section right here. Oh, it's questionable. Yeah, it is questionable. But, oh, just that trademark backhand hook. It just never gets old, does it? And, uh, well, he's looking fit. He's looking engaged. Oh, he loves it. He just had a, an evil chuckle before uh, when we spoke to him as he was heading out for this clash. There's a great sequence of turns. Oh, yeah. vintage. Ocalupo here. 
And uh, I remember watching him uh, get his victory out here at Snapper Rocks. Just tearing it apart. Yeah, and I mean, in slow motion, you see he's still got that groove. I mean, the power out of the lip, whether it be, you know, Bells, J-Bay, Snapper, amazing. Yeah, awesome. So Fanning here on the, a replay. Let's see what he got done, Rich. Oh, I love this opening turn. Just gets so much tar release. And uh, really trademark that, uh, you know, carved to slice better than anyone. Nick just driving off the bottom there, continual speed. And, uh, you know, it's worth touching on the relationship that Mick and, and Darren Hanley have had in, uh, you know, making craft, making surfboards for, for this wave in particular. Oh, definitely. Yeah. And I think that Steph's been a benefactor of that relationship and continued to refine her boards with Darren Hanley as well. But uh, great to watch this replay unfold and just see that, you know, Mick's still kind of setting the pace. But here we go on the outside. Steph Gilmore taking off. Tucking in, locking into the barrel, the Queen finds the tube and gets the exit and now goes to work on the rail. Classic stuff, drifts the fins. We're not throwing numbers at these competitors. No, we are. Well, we are. Well, that's just brilliant surfing. And this is timeless stuff again from Mick. Such clean rails as he digs in on the inside here. Wow. Mick's keeping busy. What about the tube ride from Gilmore, though? The, the, look, the tide is so perfect right now. It's just turned in, in, in the afternoon about, you know, an hour and a half after high to low tide. Of course, it's still very low out there, but this is when you get the barrels. The Snapper World Champs heat is really starting to ramp up with some amazing rides going down. You know, typically you, you schedule exhibitions like this bugs and you've got to work around a, a stacked field and you're trying to get competitors out there in dream conditions but this afternoon couldn't have played out any better we weren't going to get into those second rounds we didn't have enough time this afternoon so this is unreal having 40 minutes to watch some of the sports greats oh, do their thing you know we've got to mention kelly got that bomb before the this the hooter went and he wrote it so perfectly i don't think they filmed it because it, it hadn't started yet but gosh it's not like he hasn't had you know the crowd was screaming already even before the, the hooter went <laughs> Amazing. Won his first uh, event here on the Gold Coast way back in 97. Was still campaigning uh, and challenging a whole new stable of incredible surfers when he won in 2013. Well, the thing about Kelly, though, is that's mixed up all our classic point breaks. Burley, Kira, Snapper. You know, he's just dominated at each spot at some point. I think he likes it over here, too. Ended up getting himself a, a place here on the Gold Coast where he loves to spend some time. And, uh, yeah, he's, he's having a, a special trip uh, around Oz at the moment. He and his partner Kalani are expecting uh, a child. Kalani's having a baby shower today, so Kelly's off the hook, got the opportunity to surf in this heat. <laughs> awesome, Ronnie. But uh, another special note to make. Right now, up on Joel Parkinson's deck, overlooking this lineup here at Snapper Rocks, Seth Monies, Griffin Colapinto, Crosby Colapinto, Lindy and Axel Lyons also up there with Mon and his kids all watching this heat unfold. And they travelled together uh, a lot on the championship tour. Andy and Joel had an amazing friendship, and Andy had a great friendship with Oki and Mika as well. Yep. Um, so a really special thing to get to see. Uh, for them to get to see this exhibition go down and also with Kelly and his ultimate rival in the lineup. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, I, I just, when you were talking about that then, it just reminded me of Kelly's post heat interview at Margaret River and he was actually talking about the surfing fraternity as a whole and it is one big family you know whether you there's the tour family and all these guys compete together and you you know you're traveling the world and you, you can't help but get connected and, and get and form relationships with all these people that you're competing with uh and and it goes from fierce rivalry where you just want to <laughs> downright bury them into you know friendly uh you know friendships that will last a lifetime after it and it really at that level it really reminds me of formula one you know those guys are on the track i mean you know you saw those amazing you know Aaron senators and alain pross and they're trying to uh you know work each other over on the racetrack but then we had a tragedy it was alain pross that was right there carrying you know Ayrton center and these guys are that close you know they they've got a lifelong brotherhood and sisterhood 
That's right. They've been through a whole lot together. Even thinking about their head-to-head history is very interesting. Kelly, we chatted, chatted with him uh, before he headed out, and he was saying it's pretty close between him and Mick. Mick actually has the edge in head-to-head heats, 10-9 to 9 with Kelly. But Kelly's got the wood on Joel and Oki. Uh, between Kelly and Joel, 14 heats. Kelly, 11. Joel, 3. Between Kelly and Oki, not too different. Uh, 13 heats. Oh. Kelly, 11 wins to Oki's oh, two. Uh, but you're not going to be able to kind of chalk this one up as getting one back. It's not a head-to-head situation. And thank God for the rest of them because right now, Stephanie Gilmore would be taking a 1-0 and lead over Kelly. She's, <laughs> she's easily got the best wave of this heat so far. I reckon. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That was a beautiful barrel ride. Uh, how, how was the style of poise in there? And that thing just funneled off so well, didn't it? That classic snapper rocks. Unbelievable. Stace is out there amongst the crowd. How's the vibe, mate? Ron Dog, the, uh, the crowd is absolutely fizzing down here. It's absolutely packed, all walks of life, and um, everyone's on fire. That wave of Stephanie went down with the crew basically in the tube with her. It's one of the most unique waves in the world. You can get so close to the surface, and everyone's absolutely loving it. Uncle Mick Fanning, that would have to be the quickest recovery from an MCL injury I've ever seen. Um, the Bond University health team are just scratching their head. But I think I know what the cure is. The cure is perfect four-foot snapper with no one out. So sign him up. Yeah, that'll definitely get the adrenaline pumping and bury any pain, niggling pain that you might be feeling. Cheers, Stacey. Uh, enjoy the show, mate. What a treat. Absolute treat. Oh, this is uh, awesome, what we've got out there at the moment. Uh, obviously, Kelly Slater, the greatest of all time, a Hall of Famer, uh, a Huntington Walk of Fame inductee, of course, but some Australian Hall of Famers out there as well. We've also got one here in the booth with us in, in Wayne Rapid Bartholomew, but even at a, a pretty young age, Mick, Joel and Stephanie Gilmore, Mark Ocalupo, they've all been uh, given that legendary status in the Aussie Surfing Hall of Fame. They have, and ever since they were young, young surfers, they looked up to Kelly Slater. He was already winning titles, and gosh, you know, let's face it, I mean, he, he won six world titles between 1992 and 1998, had a three-year hiatus, came back and had that amazing rivalry with Andy Irons on the Dream Tour. That it actually set the whole future up, Andy versus Kelly, that, that was it. And uh, Andy won three world titles. Kelly went on to win another five world titles. I mean, what a, what a career. Yeah, unbelievable, Rich. And uh, at one point, Kelly started to get on a bit of a roll again, uh, as Bug mentioned. And Joel and Mick actually got together and said, hey, w- one of us has got to beat him. It ended up <laughs> being Mick that, that uh, delivered on that pact. And Joel got his in 2012. Yeah, well, it's the unique nature and, and the X factor that Kelly brings. He's just, uh, you know, he's been the benchmark out here for so many years. When he first came onto the tour, he, he sort of changed the way and, and the lines and, and got everyone thinking about how you can actually approach this wave a little bit differently. And uh, he's done that time and time again through the decades, you know, over three decades now. Yeah, it's amazing. We almost need him to, to keep turning up at events and surfing heats just so we can get through his list of achievements uh, in the jersey, but also away from competition as well. You start to have a think about it. The surf ranch, the wave pool technology that he's helped introduce and bring to surfing has been an absolute game changer. Format changes for you, Bugs. He used to bring you ideas and concepts when you were running the, the ASP. Well, you know, when, when you know, Luke Egan and, and Perry Hatchett and I went out to Fiji with him when he when he created the overlapping heat format. It was unbelievable, you know, and the, yeah, he used to come up with some great ideas. Yep, and uh, I think he's going to have a few more. But the, the main priority for Kelly in these next few years is chasing swell, getting himself in quality waves, and obviously spending a lot of time with his uh, his family, which is about to grow. Yeah, I also like uh, the fact that Kelly is just constantly pushing the boundaries with surfboards and equipment. He's on a twin fin out here, so obviously, you know, he's been one of these surfers that have really pushed the boundaries and and, and explored these different designs, and it's actually evolved, you know, surfing hardware, surfboards and fins throughout the the, the last couple of decades. Uh, He's really been a pioneer in, in so many different parts of surfing. Oh, here we go, folks. Some set waves on the outside here. And it's going to be Oki taking this one. 
Parker's just been a little short changed out here at the moment. Pulled into the pit. Didn't find his Something way through. And someone's in there. Ooh, doesn't find the exit though. Was that Parko deep in the chamber? Here's Kelly. Slater grabs the wall, tucks in, gets some time. Yeah. Before emerging, goes to one of his beautiful roundhouse cutbacks. Banks off the phone. Old swivel hips. <laughs> still got it. Bringing it through to the inside, starting to build now. I mean, Kelly, uh, we talk about the competitor a lot, but the barrel riding too is always celebrated in a big way. But the front side wraps, the carving turns, the power that he puts into those moves. He's definitely, uh, he's definitely one of the best. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, he's, he sort of coined that trademark. Uh, you know, the posture when he does that oh. front side slash, it's just, it, it freeze frames. But have a look at this, sticks the arm in, drags it, gets the vision, comes through easily. I mean, we, we, we could be in the early 2000s watching, uh, you know, Kelly Slater in his prime right now. Wow, this is worth the entry fee right here. Kelly Slater at his, in all his finery, something to behold. Nice and relaxed, just playing with this one. Driving down the line, there's that big swooping cutback. He's drifting the tail out, but uh, well, let's watch the wrap. Textbook, look how low Kelly gets. Gets that back arm nice and low. Keeps all the power into the turn. Just cat-like in his uh, approach. You just hardly ever see this guy fall. It's amazing, and you know, over the decades, four decades of unbelievable, you know, high-level surfing, and here's, here's Stephanie Gilmore. So Steph, uh, a lot of speed here, watching a replay. She just glides through her turn. Has, hasn't, uh, I mean, she's always looked free and, and, and not looked like she's ever restricted by a competitive jersey, Rich, but she uh, seems to have found a whole new level of freedom in her surfing at the yeah, moment. Yeah, there's just a little sprinkle of groove and um, relaxation in the style now. We've still got just over 18 minutes to enjoy watching these absolute legends of the sport do their thing here at Snapper Rocks. But right now, we're going to take a quick break. A massive chapter in the amazing history of the Gold Coast competitive surf scene uh, unfolding at the moment. And it's not a, a competitive heat. It's a celebration of surfing out, out there at the moment between some of our greatest world champions as we see a replay of what the Queen, Steph Gilmore, got done earlier on here. Have a look at these turns too. So awesome. Silky smooth. I loved how she just got right up forward on the board, just toying with the foam ball. And, you know, Rich, um, when, remember that first footage of Kelly's wave pillar with Steph Gilmore in the barrel? Then Kelly later said he... he you know, that, that perfect bank at Green Mountain Snapper, that was a big part of his design. And there's Steph doing the wave pool. Inspiration, That huh? Snapper. Yep. <laughs> Brings tears to the eyes. Stephanie Gilmore doing a thing here at Snapper Rocks. Just a, an unbelievable barrel ride out there right in front of her surfing heroes. She's still the grom out in this lineup at this stage, but <laughs> Look I at think the crowd. she uh, the demands the respect. The crowd's halfway out there. <laughs> the crowd is out there. Talk about an intimate lineup. Yeah, oh, good. That's awesome. Yeah, that was amazing seeing everyone turn out. I, I think, you know, it's been really hard to kind of get your, your head around when Kelly Slater might actually wrap it, even uh, after he... He left Margaret River. He, he had a, a joking comment, said, well, I might take up a spot in, in the Challenger Series on the, the Gold Coast, uh, which he has. And then he said, imagine if I won and I went to Narrabeen and got a victory down there, I'd be back on tour. Oh, that fantastic. didn't mess with people. He's just chuckling to himself. And I'm thinking, are you serious? Are you going to do this? <laughs> well, he is. <laughs> he is doing it. He is doing it. Yeah, and this is a, a great warm-up for him. But uh, you know what? I, I think... What he's really looking forward to is turning up at the Shiseido Tahiti Pro yeah. later next month and giving it a good nudge there and obviously the Corona Fiji Pro. 
And I'll tell you, in, in those three years where he took that hiatus from the, the, the regular tour, he accepted a few invitations as a wild card, and he loved being a wild card. I don't think he ever lost as a wild card. No, he was amazing. Uh, an amazing victory over in Tahiti. And, you know, you, you think about Kelly's performances over the years and, and the number of excellent rides that he's had uh, at different venues, 10-point rides. He's had them here. Joel Parkinson's been pretty good for some perfect scores as well. Yeah, I think he's actually had more he's perfect had scores than anyone in the lineup at the moment. Uh, in Parker's had five here. Well, he's had five here, but he's been a little sleepy in this heat so far. We saw him get that big long tube, and then uh, Oki did the, uh, the little fade. I, I got a feeling, remember there was a, the crowd, I think he was in another barrel, and the one um, in, just before Kelly's. Right on cue. Yeah, and uh, rocking those Andy Irons, rising subboard shorts, iconic. As we see Joel now, he's been surfing so well lately. Just wind through one of his big front side calves, Kaipo. What a treat on day one of the event here. Hey, what am I frothing about? Five world champs, 24 world titles, pump and snapper, and I got Kelly Slater's boards. See ya. <laughs> yeah, they're worth a bit. I wonder what Kelly is going to ride later on. In the uh, event, he's out there on a 20 at the moment. Yeah. Do you think the competitor will get the better of him or, or do you think he'll just uh, stick with the 20 and, and have a bit of fun in this contest? I reckon he'll stick with the 20 if I had to put a wager on it. I reckon, like, you know, in the interview before, Steph Gilmore went, I really regret not entering this event because surfing several is throughout the surface. I think that's what Kelly wants. He just wants heat after heat. Keep going. He goes, Oki, he's got some speed and we know that he's got the power to sink that rail deep. Glides through a cut back, bounce on the foam. Oh, accidentally swings into reverse. As we see Steph Gilmore unleash on the outside. And Steph's just picking this lineup apart at the moment. Love where she just glides across the top of these walls. Beautiful big roundhouse. And she'll hang on for the finish. Oh, what a ride. She's comboed it. <laughs> He's caught him in combo. <laughs> so awesome. The Queen. Putting on some kind of show. I mentioned that between this lot, there's 136 championship tour wins. Kelly's got 56 of them. And Steph Gilmore's got 33. Nearly a ton between them. Unbelievable. Well, the, the other thing, too, is that e each one of these world champions have got such a distinctive style, don't they? Yeah. You know, Oki, right from the outset, he came onto the tour and he sort of redefined uh, what style was. But look at Steph. She is the epitome of style. Just connects with that first turn. Gets that tail release and uh, regains perfect control down the line. And then just a series of uh, manoeuvres. This thing just kept growing as it went right down into uh, towards Greenmount. Wow, that's a great view. Look at this, at the final manoeuvre there, just a beautiful, like she's gone past the crowd, she's just having a surf now. Look at the texture on that wave. Oh, Steph Gilmore just on fire. I think she's had the two best waves so far. She has. She Love has it. Sure. Kelly got that bomb about a minute before the heat. Backed up by a barrel. Oh, hang on. Oh, Slater ducks in, finds some cover, punches through the curtain. The goat lets that lip have it and gets on full. Just attack mode. This is one of the most unbelievable barrel riders that's ever lived, especially in waves of consequence. Oki uh, on the outside, he just uh, gets a, a little sunk down, riding out of that last turn. Listen to that crowd. I reckon Ox put a bit of pressure on himself. He was... <laughs> he's, he's surfing well. He's surfing so good, just on point, looking uh, really fit and energised. Let's see what Kelly did here. You can see the barrel down the line, back towards his section. Screams all the way through the second section. You can see the, the red jersey 
through the curtain, blasts the top of that one, and then continues on down the line. A couple of funky little turns through the inside, but uh, looking really connected at the moment. I mean, this would have been such a tease if there wasn't going to be a CT next year. Because this is a CT. That was a CT roar. Here we go. Parker oh. on the outside. Finds a shoot that's just big enough to, to fit him. It's a bit of cover. Nice little afternoon vision here. But Joel just uh, hasn't yet connected with a, a quality set wave. Nor is Mick. He's on the outside waiting for his shot at it. Still just under nine minutes remaining. So this is just awesome. A 40-minute expression session that we have just been so blessed to have this happen. Expression extravaganza, I think was what we should call it. This has been a real treat. Yeah, it's so fun. Just uh, absolutely firing these conditions. And, you know, it's amazing look, the, the level that all these surfers have maintained since, you know, uh, especially Mick, Joel, Oki, uh, maintained an incredible level since they wrapped up their championship tour careers some time ago. Steph, obviously, just fresh off. Uh, announcing that she was going to have a year off, really. We're not that far into this year, uh, and it just feels like she could just waltz back into a championship tour event and, and win. Oh, look, on the current form right now, she hasn't skipped a beat, you know. Um, I, I still feel like she's she's energised, she's engaged. She'll have the year off to sort of decompress and, and, and refocus, and she'll come back even better. And uh, obviously, you know, she, she only needs to look at Kelly for inspiration. You know, age is, uh, it really is only a number. Kelly's proven that. If you can stay fit and healthy, stay strong, stay agile, all the foundations are still there. And every single one of these surfers we're witnessing now, they'll never lose it. No. Oh, it's Kelly. Here Kelly's goes Kelly. Smaller wave, but just rips through that carve. Doesn't get the finish on that one. Well, hopefully we get to see another big flurry of sets. The tide is coming in pretty quickly now. So this is probably the last of the barrel section. In half an hour, there probably won't be that many more barrels. Well, it's, uh, the sun has set. It's pretty dark out there at the moment. And, uh, yeah, it's just a shame there's not a little bit more light left in this day. Could watch this go on for uh, another hour. Yeah. It's, uh, it's been a, a special way to kick off the first stop in the Challenger Series. A big day of huge announcements. And uh, like I said earlier, this is, you know, really about getting out there with, with Kelly uh, for, for Mick, Joel, Oki and Steph and, and cheering him on too uh, into this next phase of his life. But it's, it's going to be awesome to see him compete at these next uh, events. I, I love the fact that he's been given these wild card opportunities. Yeah. Uh, I really feel like he deserves them. Uh, and it's going to be the ultimate way to sign off. We want to see him signed off in, in waves where performance-wise he just took the sport to a whole new place. Yeah. He, he sure did. And, you know, when you really think about it, though, you know, he, he stepped away, but he's actually competing on two tours right now. <laughs> Yeah, three if you count this uh, exhibition. <laughs> Fantastic. But, yeah, it, it's going to be fun. I, I mean, I Kelly's, got, something. Kelly's got so much uh, happening in his life at the moment, but at some stage I'd love for him to take up a position on the commentary. As we see, Paco taking off. Still a, a real favourite here, of course, when he's surfing at this venue. People just eat it up. Timeless style as he just creeps forward on that board and loses contact with his equipment. Bit of trademark rail work there from Slater. <laughs> you can hear the onside of the outside just ramping this crowd up into a frenzy. We want more. We want more. Okay, back to the 
biggest cheer so far has definitely been reserved for Kelly. Here goes Meg. Nice cover on the outside. The arcing turn that saw him claim 22 championship tour wins. When he was on the forehand. Uh, but also three uh, thrilling world title victories. It's, it's pretty unbelievable that Mick's been away from the tour and Joel for this long and they've still maintained such a high level in their surfing. You know, Kelly's, he's been around the tour, you know, and it, it's extraordinary. We can't really even consider him in the same conversation because he's a freak. But Mick's level is, I mean, he's so fit still. The rail work is still so clean. The precision, the timing, still totally on point. It's just great to witness. So three and a half minutes to go now. Steph Gilmore, well positioned, where uh, she spent so much of her time in this lineup. Bugs right there behind the rock, ready to get barreled. Uh, she, the Queen is on her throne, and she just is so comfortable out here. All of them are. They they all serve so well at snapper. They're if Steph's the, the queen of snapper rocks, who's the king? Oh, oh. <laughs> wow! You'd have to. It, it's, it's out of this mob right here. <laughs> Rich, want to stick your neck out? Um, flip a coin between Mick and Joel. Yeah, that's it. Flip a coin. Here he goes. Fanning yeah. again. It's going to be a uh, small wave antics from Mick. In this heat, he's had some great moments though. Can't punch his way through this pit though. Yeah, you can definitely tell Mick's uh, competitive urges have softened a little as uh, as he's retired from uh, full-time competition. He's got a lot going on. A couple of kids now, plenty going on in the business world. But uh, he's still, you know, is, is just so good in the water. He's still out there every uh, every day. Two minutes remaining here, and what a what a fantastic start to this uh, event. And the Gold Coast, you know, showing off its best assets at the moment. Pump and Snapper Rocks, this pristine, clean coastline. Everyone in full celebration of this coastal lifestyle. Yeah, well said, Ronnie. And that's what it is. It's uh, the surfing culture and the lifestyle. Uh, just the freedom to be able to do it. You know, and, and this is an interesting one. We, we are looking at icons of the sport. You know, people that, that really did just take us to a whole new level performance-wise. They're out there together in this well, lineup. But when you think about this region, so many champion surfers have been produced. You've got to draw the line somewhere, otherwise you, you've still got 100 people out there in the surf competing for waves. As we see Gilmore up again, just a minute left to enjoy this show. As Steph just glides over that foam ball and then unleashes just a beautiful fin release from the eight-time world champion who's really just dominated this heat. Found the best waves. Timeless style on show as always. Just so on point. The timing perfect, the style perfect. Kelly up and riding. Bit of foam on the face here. Kelly just carves right through it. Are we going to chalk this up as another Snapper Rocks victory for Stephanie Gilmore? Yep. I think the Queen has uh, towed them up in this one. She just got the three best waves out there yeah. and clicked. 80 seconds to oh, go. Oh, hockey. Yeah. He was a regular footer this whole time. <laughs> nice work there from off. Oh, God. <laughs> Kelly getting up switch foot. You don't want to get in the way of that surfboard. What a show. The Snapper World Champs heat has come to a close and it's unanimous here in the booth. Stephanie Gilmore taking the victory, but every surfer out there with some real highlight moment, moments and the crowd absolutely devoured the show. What a, a presentation and what a treat. Never forget it. Just a great treat.
What a moment. Yeah. yeah. All these surfers, it's going to take them a while to get through the crowd as well. Uh, the crowd just got their money's worth big time. Surfing is free. And they just lap that up enormously. How good. Oki, slayed up, hugging it out on the inside. I think there'll be a lot of hugs going down as these two make their way in, as all the champs meet the crowd there on the beach. Mick on the outside making his way in. Look how quickly that crowd just swarm that line up, line up to get a piece of it themselves. Yeah, well, Mick got his barrel. <laughs> awesome stuff. <laughs> wow, what a great energy around this heat. Uh, we do that every afternoon. I know. Yeah. Hey, wouldn't it be let's, great? Let's finish the day with that, with an amazing exhibition. Well, we've still got the WSL post show, and I'm sure we're going to see some highlights from the Snapper World Champs heat. As that uh, Slater hits the shore, he's got a... I reckon about a four-hour trip to get back to his car later on because they've turned out and forced to see the GOAT today. Wow. A beautiful afternoon here at Snapper Rocks. Day one in the bag. The WSL post show is coming up. Don't go anywhere. Absolutely. Um, double duty, Stephanie Gilmore. Look at her go. The kids can't wait. And uh, why should they? Here, here you are. <laughs> that was so much fun. Oh, my goodness. I was... Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I hated to say that. Um, yeah. No, actually, Joel gave me that good one, that uh, that barrel. And uh, and then, yeah, I just seemed to be in the... <laughs> yeah, you know, that was my plan to go out there and just win some all. But... Um, <laughs> Know, yeah, no, that was fun. It was a little slow, but wow, that was that was probably the highlight of my one of my probably my whole career, life maybe, to surf empty snapper with those guys. Yeah, that was really cool. No, we could feel that on the paddle back out. You could just see how frothing you were. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you're watching a perfect wall, and then Mick rip into one, Joel, Kelly, and then Oki. It's just like, yeah, it was like a weird dream, you know. You, you dream about it as a kid and. To go out there and experience it in real life is, is really special. So, Absolutely. Thanks for coming down. We're claiming that um, the judges were too scared to call it. We'll call it. You won. Oh, sweet. Thanks, guys. What do I get? Everything. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> I'm already behind the rock from here on out. You've got it anyway, bro. Come on. <laughs> um, Kelly, um, just, a, uh, just a word. Well, one and over Stephanie Gilmore. Say what? Uh, love one, Stephanie. Correct. Yes. Yep, she got uh, one zero against all four of us, all the other four of us. She 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 was just totally insane. It was funny because Mick Mick just goes up. He's like she just everywhere she turns is just lining up for her, and she's just on in sync with it. It was great, but you gave her priority, so you know it just was going to happen. Yeah, but you guys started the heat early. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I want to know you're going to ride that board in the in uh, in your heat in the second round. Really, it's really a fun board. Yeah, it's fast. I just got to stay above it. If I lean too much, it kind of catches sometimes, but it's fun. It's a good fast board. What's the plan for the rest of the afternoon? You're going to be down here till midnight. Um, I might be. Hey, thank you. She gave me a ukulele. Bust out a tune. Nice. It's in tune almost. It's a little flat on the bottom, on the, on the A string. Oh, sign it. There we go. All right. Kelly, thank you for your time. Thanks for the exhibition. That was absolutely insane. Thanks, uh, Ron. i here for it. Thanks for letting us surf. We were just having a... We, we were so stoked to be out there. It was really great. Thanks, you guys. What an afternoon. Thanks again. Thank you, Ron. Pandemonium. <laughs> oh, we love it. Yeah, well done. And I can confirm word just coming in. There's a, a pallet of bonsai at Steph's front door. That's the prize for winning. So congratulations. <laughs> go. Yeah, good luck getting through that this week.